Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal in depth look at the refreshed 2015 Nissan GTR. So, this is going to be a detailed in depth review of the GTR. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, take an all thorough road test, and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, Let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The GTR comes standard with Nissan's intelligent key system, so by just keeping the key fob in your pocket, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle by just tapping that black button on the side of the door handle. Tap it once to lock, the vehicle will chime twice, then after waiting a second, tap it again, it'll chime once and unlock the driver's door, and tap it once more to unlock the passenger door. Then simply press in on the handle, it automatically pops out, and pull. This GTR is finished in Regal Red, a new optional color for 2015. It'll set you back $3,000, but it combines 24 karat gold coated glass flakes blended into the paint for a brilliant metallic shine. The interior is finished in the standard combination of black perforated leather and faux suede. In order to start the vehicle, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior of the vehicle, put your foot on the brake, and hit the red console mounted engine start button to go. The GTR features electro-hydraulic speed proportional rack and pinion steering routed through a meaty, leather-wrapped three-spoke steering wheel. It's comfortable and grippy with thumb rests at 3 and 9, grip bolsters at 2 and 10, and subtle extensions towards the bottom. It also looks and feels high quality with perforated leather across the sides, a padded airbag cover, and brushed metal trim surrounding the multifunction controls. The overall ratio is 15 to 1 with 2.4 turns to lock and a 36.6 foot turning diameter. In addition to featuring an aluminum steering rack, four-point mounting, and stiff insulators. Subtly tweaked over the years, the steering is quick, responsive, and low effort. Although straight-line stability is one of the updates for 2015, the GTR can still tend to follow highway grooves. While few and far between, it does require some minor corrections here and there. All in all, for day-to-day -day driving, the steering feels great. It's not too large of a wheel and has just the right amount of grippy textures. The speed proportional design reduces steering effort at lower speeds for easier maneuverability while firming up at higher speeds for better precision. It is nicely weighted and predictable, definitely one of my favorite setups as of late. Delivering power to the ground through a carbon composite drive shaft and limited slip differential is a six-speed dual-clutch automated manual transmission that's able to deliver rapid 150 millisecond gear changes when placed into R mode. The separate wet clutches each control three gears, one for the odd gears, one, three, and five, while the other controls even gears, two, four, and six. Whether shifting up or down, the next gear through the interaction of the clutches is pre-selected to minimize lag and power delivery to the wheels, leading to near instantaneous gear changes for more linear power delivery. Downshifts are accompanied by rev matching in R mode no matter if you're driving in automatic or manual. Hill start assist and high performance differential oil are both standard as is launch control. 
Dry soap lubrication continuously sprays transmission oil directly onto the gears for reduced friction and greater reliability when cornering at high speeds. Gear changes can be performed automatically for convenience, but the real excitement comes with the large magnesium paddle shifters mounted to the steering column. Switching between auto and manual can be done by moving the selector to the right or simply pulling on a paddle to engage manual shifting. They're easily accessible and even feature soft touch material for a nice tactile feel. A backup camera with adaptive guidance lines is standard across all models. The setup switches in the lower part of the dash control various performance parameters for the transmission, shock absorbers, and VDC stability control, allowing you to completely tailor the GTR's driving dynamics. Further refined for 2015, each system has three modes, an R mode, which is the most aggressive setting, normal mode, which is the car's default, and a special mode. For the gearbox, shift times are decrease a good bit in R mode for rapid acceleration. Normal is the smoothest setting you'll notice shifts aren't quite as assertive, but it still gives you performance for everyday driving. Save mode is more for long distance traveling and gradual torque delivery, further smoothing out gear changes for more relaxed cruising and driving on slippery road conditions. The suspension's R mode firms up the dampers for the stiffest ride profile and enhanced agility and dynamism in the corners. Normal mode leaves the damping force to be controlled automatically, while if comfort is the softest setting. You'll be surprised by how different the modes are. Compared to the R mode, comfort is really quite smooth, it soaks up the bumps well, and highly recommended for long trips. The VDC's R mode adapts power transfer between the front and rear wheels for enhanced handling. Normal mode limits control to the brakes and engine output, while off completely disengages the VDC system. So, let's go ahead and flip on the automatic LED headlamps and the hazards. Both windows are fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime a few times to let you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. The current generation GTR has been on sale in the North American market since the 2009 model year. It's the spiritual successor to the classic Skyline GTRs produced between 1969 and 1974, then the R32, 33, and 34 between 1989 and 2002. Unfortunately, the original GTRs never made it to the American shores. Through the years, they did become legends with import enthusiasts for overall performance capabilities, relative affordability, and their success in motorsports. The 2009 R35 GTR picked up where the 2002 R34 Skyline GTR left off. It's a prime example of first-rate automotive engineering, the ultimate supercar that can be driven anywhere, by anyone, anytime, developed to be one of the fastest and quickest cars you could buy at any price. It's even responsible for setting numerous records on Germany's famed Nürburgring. By now, many people are familiar with the GTR, its premium midship layout, twin-turbo V6, and advanced all-wheel drive system. Each year since its launch in 2009, Nissan has bestowed the GTR with updated power, refinements to the suspension, transmission, steering, aerodynamics, and much more. It seems to be just one of those cars that's gotten better and better over the years. 2015 is no exception as it might as well be the most polished GTR to date, especially with the new high-performance GTR Nismo, the most powerful GTR to date. Aerodynamics play a big part in the GTR's overall performance. Thanks to extensive wind tunnel testing, the shape is an incredibly low drag coefficient of just 0.26. The updated design allows you to slip through the wind with finesse, develop an impressive level of downforce, and cool vital components. Styling hasn't changed much over the years aside from subtle updates to the front and rear fascias, including the addition of LED daytime running lights with new, fully adaptive LED headlamps for 2015. The signature LED quad tail lamps now feature continuous rings of light for a fresh look. The body is made from a combination of steel, carbon fiber, aluminum, and composites. The lower front fascia features a large grill opening with rounded edges that help cool the engine, intercoolers, and running gear, while minimizing drag. Part of the air pulled through the front is passed through large vented sections in the wheel wells, just ahead of the tires to assist in cooling the brakes. 
The air exiting the wheel wells meets with the smooth flow of air that's guided by the double fins on the outer edges of the lower fascia, helping create front end downforce. The dark gray hood scoops channel large volumes of cool air and pass it directly on top of the engine compartment. Across the sides, vents at the back of the front fenders help create downforce by reducing positive pressure in the wheel wells and engine compartment, in addition to drawing heat for enhanced cooling of the brakes. I've always thought that the GTR styling was aggressive and purposeful, built not for beauty but for brawn. It just looks fast. Two distinctive character lines define the side profile, aiding into that fast appearance. Beginning at the headlamps, a line flows across and down the fenders alongside the vent before blending into the lower door panels. The other begins at the top of the vent and extends across the doors and into the rear quarters. The lower dark gray cladding aids to the aggressive look and is perfectly complemented by the finish on the wheels. The smooth silhouette and fastback roofline channels air to the wicked looking spoiler out back, again creating downforce to help keep the rear end planted at high speeds. The huge quad polished exhaust tips are purely cosmetic but give the GTR an unmistakable identity. In addition to a nearly flat underbody and rear diffuser, small vents on either side of the rear bumper just behind the wheels help manage air and send it out into the rear as efficiently as possible. The GTR's premium midship platform places the engine further back into the chassis and incorporates the world's first independent rear transaxle all-wheel drive system. This places the transmission, transfer case, and final drive at the rear of the vehicle connected to the engine by a carbon composite drive shaft. By relocating everything to the rear, it yields a better balanced vehicle while improving traction and braking. This also maintains a relatively roomy passenger compartment up front. To the right of the carbon drive shaft are steel input and output shafts. They're positioned to lower the car's center of gravity while working with the all-wheel drive system to transfer torque up front. Nissan claims that a torque tube would have upset the car's balance coming out of the corners as the GTR's components were already quite rigid to begin with. Without a torque tube, the rear suspension is able to act independently versus synchronization with the front end. The electronically controlled Atessa ETS all-wheel drive system provides up to 100% of the vehicle's available torque to the rear wheels, delivering the steering feel and response that's reminiscent of a rear-wheel drive car. As needed, up to 50% of the torque can be sent to the front for enhanced traction and control that you would expect out of an all-wheel drive car, more tailored for performance, but also allows all-weather usability. The torque split continuously varies based on speed and travel, lateral and transverse acceleration, steering angle, tire slip, and road surface. GTR-specific yaw rate feedback control is another important player in distributing torque. It measures the difference between the target yaw rate based on the steering angle and actual yaw rate detected by the yaw rate sensor and G sensor to adapt the torque bias. Unlike other stability control systems that can cut power or apply the brakes when slip is detected, the GTR's VDC or Vehicle Dynamics Control System actually sends more power to the appropriate wheels when in R mode to counteract oversteer and understeer, helping keep the car within its intended path at all times. The GTR comes with forged aluminum alloy raised wheels measuring 20 by 9.5 inches in front and 20 by 10.5 inches in the rear. Premium models carry these 10 spoke wheels with a dark gray gloss finish. Introduced back in 2012, they weigh 26.4 pounds each and are a bit lighter than the 7 spoke alloys found in earlier GTRs. They also feature special knurling to assist in keeping the tires secure to the wheels during hard acceleration and braking. These examples are wrapped in the standard ultra high performance Dunlop Sport Max run flat tires, now featuring a revised tread pattern and compound. Measuring 255 40 in front and 285 35 in the rear, all season run flats are also available. The tires benefit from stiffer sidewalls for reduced deformation and improved agility during hard cornering. With the performance tires, the GTR is said to hold about 1G of lateral acceleration. I have no doubt about this as the tires are really quite sticky. Braking from 60 miles an hour takes just 106 feet thanks to four-wheel, cross-drilled and internally ventilated two-piece floating Brembo disc brakes. In addition to four-channel ABS, electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, 2015 brings more linear response in everyday driving while boasting great pedal feel, especially in wet conditions. 
They measure a substantial 15.35 by 1.28 inches in front, clamped by six-piston monoblock calipers, and 15 by 1.18 inches in the rear with four-piston calipers. Naturally, the GTR features an advanced independent suspension consisting of aluminum double wishbones in front with an aluminum multi-link rear suspension mounted to six-point front and rear subframes. Updates for 2015 are set to further lower the center of gravity, things like revised spring rates and shock absorbers, new front anti-roll bar with a reduced roll center height thanks to modified front caster and modified rear geometry, not to mention relocated front suspension bushings. The subtle efforts are meant to increase tire contact with the ground and reducing load fluctuation between the wheels. In addition to front and rear 34mm hollow stabilizer bars and progressive spring rakes, the GTR is kept planted and compliant over a variety of surfaces thanks to Bill Stein Damtronic monotube shock absorbers, with the three mode driver adjustable modes we discussed earlier, firming or relaxing the dampers as desired. Overall length is 183.8 inches with a width of 74.6 inches and a height of 53.9 inches running on a 109.4 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight seen here is around 3,851 pounds with 53% of the weight riding over the front axle. The GTR's engine is entirely assembled by hand in a dedicated clean room. Each unit bears a plaque carrying the signature of one of four master craftsmen known as Takumi. Only the Takumi are allowed to assemble the twin turbocharged all aluminum VR38 3.8 liter V6. The engine features double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and variable intake valve timing. Compression ratio rings in at 9 to 1, while engine speed maxes at 7,000 RPM. The GTR uses plasma sprayed bores, which are said to reduce friction and improve piston cooling, while decreasing weight by 3 kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds when compared to traditional cast iron liners. Bore and stroke dimensions are 95.5 and 88.4 millimeters, respectively. The VR38 features a symmetrical independent intake and exhaust manifold system. The dual IHI turbochargers are integrated within the exhaust manifolds to save weight and boost response, each producing up to 10.2 psi of boost. A secondary air system helps the catalyst reach temperatures quickly for improved emissions on cold starts. Other notable features include a thermostatically controlled oil cooling system, oil scavenge pump for maintaining oil flow through the turbos, a lateral wet and dry sump oiling system, as well as a specially designed oil pan to maintain pressure at high speeds. It develops 545 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 463 pound-feet of torque between 3200 and 5800 RPM. This leads to 0 to 60 times tested anywhere between 2.8 and 3 seconds when using launch control. Absolutely astounding! Quarter mile times have been tested around the 11 second mark at 125 miles an hour with a top speed of 192 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the GTR has seen improvements over the years. It's ultra low emissions certified and is rated by the EPA between 16 miles to a gallon in the city and 23 on the highway. It runs on required premium fuel and carries a 19 and a half gallon tank. Obviously, you're going to be spending a lot of time behind the wheel of the GTR, so Nissan's given it a well-crafted, driver-focused, and downright luxurious interior. It's packed with plenty of high-end standard features, excellent build quality, premium materials, and a bit of customizability. Pretty much every surface is wrapped in soft-touch material with double-stitched portions across the doors and dash. It not only looks tailored, but offers some of the softest padding I've seen this side of Rolls-Royce. The lower portion of the door panel is finished in carpeted material with a little storage pocket. You have satin black trim, stitched leather and perforated portion across the grip handle, your power locks and power windows. Your power mirrors and folding mirrors are located on the dash. These standard seats offer 8-way power adjustment for the driver and 4-way for the passenger. Interestingly enough, the passenger seat is somewhat simpler styling than the one on the driver's side. Both feature heated surfaces. They offer fantastic levels of comfort and support and really hug you in place. The faux suede is perforated, as is portions of the leather, and really gives an appreciable amount of extra grip, otherwise you can opt for full semi-aniline leather buckets. It's easy to find a comfortable position using the silver rotary knob for the main adjustments. Extra height adjustment can be found towards the front. The only downside is that there's no memory presets, nor is there any ad extra adaptive lumbar support. The lumbar I thought would be an issue over time, but Nissan's done quite well making sure the seats conform to your back. At least for me, it was quite comfortable to travel in, especially with the suede surfaces being heated in the cold climates. The headrests are fixed and have ports for racing harnesses. The seatbelts can be attached to the seat bags for easy reach. 
Down below you have a GTR entry threshold as well as the optional deep cut pile carpeting with big thick GTR metal emblem across each edge and a little bit of an all weather portion for the driver's side, aluminum sport pedals and a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel. Even though the GTR is still somewhat of a noisy car, for 2015 Nissan has added extra sound deadening under the floor, trunk, drive tunnel and firewall making it a little bit quieter than previous iterations. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. So let's go ahead and shut her up. I know the biggest question on everybody's mind is how this thing drives. I mean, it's been out since 2009. It's had improvements along the way. But really, what's it like to be behind the wheel and live with it for a week? I mean, this is a lifetime opportunity for me. I never thought that I could have the opportunity to be able to do something like this. And first and foremost, let me tell you, this thing is freaking fantastic. I've never driven anything like it in my life. I mean, dual clutch transmissions in this segment, they're pretty common, but I mean, look at this. Rev match at fourth, third, second. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Man, this thing pulls. It is unbelievable. It just throws you into the back of the seat. Like, you know, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> Instead of me rambling, let's, let's, let's just talk about how the vehicle is to drive because, I mean, you could just talk for hours, I'm sure, about how just awesome that acceleration is. Anyway, so 545 horsepower through a twin turbo V6. It is all-wheel drive. It primarily acts as a rear-wheel drive car except in slippery scenarios or when traction um, is needed and then it disperses torque to the front. So the only transmission, like I said, it's a dual clutch six speed automatic gearbox. It is very responsive. I have it in the R mode right now, which performs 150 millisecond downshifts. And it's just extremely responsive. While a six speed may seem a little outdated for 2015 standards, I mean, the GTR has done a pretty good job staying very fresh over the last six years or so. I mean, the body styling, I wouldn't even touch it. I mean, it's just, it just oozes just gorgeousness. <laughs> um, updated front and rear lighting, pretty much, um, I'll show you that stuff a little bit later in the video. But I mean, the rest of everything else, it just, it still looks good. Um, the gearbox there's nothing to complain about it it's a little bit um, perky jerky at low speeds and I believe that was one of the critiques of the GTR when it first came out but it is really smooth I mean I, I've never driven the earlier ones so I can't really compare as far as improvements sake but just from driving this a week or so I mean the only time you're really gonna notice it being a little bit rough is in the R mode and you're not gonna leave it in R mode all the time just when you want to take some country back roads, flip it down a few gears, and just take off. But 
other than that, it's a great performing transmission. I like it. Um, it's a little bit noisy sometimes, as is the GTR in general. And I actually I did some research online because I was just really curious because there's a lot of um, noise from the powertrain. And I know Nissan has done a really good job at adding extra sound insulation throughout the vehicle and um, some other key areas for extra damping and all that kind of stuff. But it's still a little bit noisy. It might be a little bit noisier than you would typically expect out of a sports car or a supercar, especially at low speeds. You can hear a lot of the uh, like the gear mechanisms and stuff, I guess. The gearbox, you can hear that change um, a lot more than you would in a typical car. And I think that's just really the way a GTR is. Um, I didn't know what to think of it at first, but the more I drive it, the more it kind of gives you that mechanical feeling and the, the connectedness to the car, I guess. So I really don't mind it. Um, the ride quality itself is, is pretty good, actually. It's a lot better than I was expecting it to be. And I also think um, when the GTR first came out, that one of its critiques was that it has a, had a pretty punishing ride. And I know for 2015, they also improved it even more to give it a much more compliant ride without losing its handling ability. And I mean, over smooth pavement, pavement like this, it's downright smooth. Even over a rough, choppy pavement, it's you feel it, it's rough, but it's not punishing. Um, it's not really transmitted to your body at all. I mean, you can feel the car vibrate, but you're not like, ow. <laughs> so that's definitely pretty good because the cool thing about the GTR is that it's a supercar that you can use on a daily basis that has speeds and power that can really get illegal really really quickly if you're not careful so <laughs> I guess that's the one downside of it is that you have 545 horsepower that you have to make sure to tame and not make it not keep your right foot down on the accelerator all the time because you really don't realize how fast you're going in this car unless you're going around curves or something because it's not a loud car at all and that's that's one thing that I wish it was a little bit louder. Um, I, I hate to say maybe like a sound in, a sound generator or something, or even just a louder exhaust. I'm sure the Nismo version, which I believe has an option for a titanium exhaust, is probably pretty sexy sounding. I, I, can, I can imagine. I mean, this, this doesn't sound bad either. But you know what this reminds me a lot of? Um, the Bugatti Veyron. And I've never driven one, but I've ridden in one. That, multiple speeds and acceleration and stuff and the one downside to turbo cars especially twin turbo and with the Veyron quad turbo jars is that it dubs out a lot of the raw engine sound it seems and you can tune the exhaust and all that to make it sound really really cool like Mercedes AMG does that pretty well and I like the GTR the fact that it's got a very signature sound but it has a lot of like a like a whirring sound instead of like a raw like muscle sound so that's the only thing that I would suggest I guess um, at least for me if I bought a GTR I'd definitely put an exhaust on it because I've heard some pretty sick sounding exhausts on YouTube so that that ought to be pretty cool um, have a little bit of fun with it and personalizability <laughs> One thing that I am not able to do, and believe me, I've tried to find an avenue to do this, and I don't know if I'm actually able to, but obviously the launch control with this car is just something to be reckoned with. It's just crazy. I, I honestly don't even want to do it unless I'm on a track, because, and that's, like I said, if I'm even able to, I don't know if I'm able to do it with a press car, so I'm, I'm just not going to, but <laughs> the acceleration with this car is crazy and I know a lot of that has to do with the all-wheel drive system because it gets to put all that power to the pavement all at once and it's not losing any traction to wheel spin or anything like that so no matter if you're on the highway or starting off at a standstill this car will put you in the back of the seat and it's the sensation that you feel like the car is going to break traction and just go all over the place because it pulls that hard and it doesn't. It is so solid and smooth in a straight line. I mean, around a corner, it does. There's no body roll that I can tell at all. You can just throw this thing into any corner that you want. It'll stay composed. Crack down a few gear shifts and just rock it out. It's such. It's such a just a cool.
cool sensation. I mean, the one thing about the GTR that's very, very different from its competitors is the fact that it's a little bit less, um, what's the word, maybe visceral? It, for me, it definitely makes me feel connected to the road. I mean, with the, the cockpit style interior, this fantastic steering wheel is not too big and it has good big bolsters across the side and it feels smaller. I mean, the GTR, I don't think is a small car at all, but it feels very nimble from this position. But a lot of everything in here is ran off computers. I mean, it's definitely a lot more refined feeling than the way that the car basically makes it impossible to do something stupid <laughs> unless you are just really acting a fool <laughs> so there's there's a lot of governing systems on this car that will really maximize your experience both off and on the track so you can enjoy this vehicle on a daily basis be responsible and it'll just it'll treat you well day after day and you'll just love it <laughs> One of my favorite pieces of tech inside is the GTR standard 11 speaker Bose audio system featuring dual subwoofers mounted between the rear seats. They essentially use the trunk as big resonance chambers for a really powerful sound. The quality and clarity of the mids and highs nicely balances out the bass to yield a pleasant sound no matter the genre of music. It's all routed through an LCD touchscreen mobile media navigation infotainment system in the dash. It's on the same plane as the instrument cluster, so everything's nice and easy to see if you're just glancing over for a second, especially with the multifunction displays. The system isn't quite up to date as the new Nissan Connect system found in the Murano, which I really liked, but it still offers pretty good functionality, it's easy to use, and pretty decent graphics. You have real-time weather updates, traffic maps, standard satellite radio, iPod auxiliary USB integration, as well as a CD player down in the lower console. Of course, all of your destination input, route settings, map is all located in the bottom. You have vehicle information, hands-free Bluetooth telephone, and settings for more detailed customizability of the system. The left-hand side of the instrument display, there's a little controller stack with the rotary wheel in the middle, display brightness, as well as status displays with summary information for fuel economy, navigation, climate control, and radio modes up top. On the right hand side you have a back button in the bottom right as well as the function displays. Built in collaboration with Polyphony Digital and Clarion. Polyphony Digital is actually the same company that produces the Gran Turismo video games. Instead of just scrolling through and reading off all of the status gauges, I'll let you just kind of see for yourself, but it offers a whole lot of different systems so you can always see basically what every aspect of the car is up to, from boost pressure to lateral G's, engine oil pressure, and so much more. There's even a built-in timer system with a stopwatch. You can activate this by a button on the steering wheel and I'll show that in just a second. Padded a billers with side curtain airbags. Padded visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. And an auto dimming view for your mirror, three position garage home link located down below. Up top, you have the microphone for the hands free Bluetooth telephone, interior illumination and reading lamps, as well as a padded sunglass container. The other little microphone in the top is for the new Bose Active Noise Cancelling System for the 2015 model year. It basically works to counteract some unpleasant low frequency noises by emitting a counter frequency through the vehicle's audio system, basically with an end goal of making the interior a little quieter. The GTR is still kind of a noisy vehicle just because of its inherent design, but it definitely helps, I'm sure. Continuing down the center console, amongst the carbon fiber housing, you have your basic radio controls like I showed you earlier. Not to mention the dual zone electronic automatic climate control standard equipment, with your temperature located on either sides, different zones, front and rear defrost, recycling, vent, AC, and your fan speed in the middle. The different setup switches, a little bit more carbon fiber down below with an in-dash CD player, and a little plaque designating sound by Bose. The center console is highlighted by satin black trim with solid touches of pad material thrown in, padded e-brake with perforated leather, and two cup holders. All the way in the back, you have a soft padded armrest with a little bit of storage 
lined in velour, a 12 volt power outlet, and USB port. As far as the steering wheel, on the left hand side you have your radio controls, volume, seek, changing your track, and down below your hands free telephone and voice commands. Please say call, followed by a phone book name, or say a category like navigation. You can push the talk switch to stop voice prompts and give a command at once. Remember to wait for the tone before speaking. Cancel. Exit. Voice recognition is cancelled. On the right hand side you have your cruise control and up top here is where you activate the vehicle's stopwatch. Intermittent wipers to the right and all of your lining controls to the left. The gauge cluster is really quite simple. They kind of blend together with their satin silver rings and the speedometer and tachometer have a carbon effect. Down below you have a digital driver information system and in the top you have your gear position. To the left hand side you can go between your trip computer as well as brightness. These buttons correspond to the different menu pages. And you can reset things with that button. Alrighty. And we'll go ahead and shut her down. So, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. You can open the trunk either by the button in the dash, the remote fob, or a soft membrane button located just above the license plate. The GTR has around 8.8 .8 cubic feet of total cargo space, which is really more than I thought it would have. It's not really the most practical opening in the world, the lift height is pretty high and the opening isn't too big. But it has a pretty deep cargo well, so it can swallow a whole lot of stuff. It does have a cargo mat down below with soft carpeting. To help pull the trunk down, there's a little leather strap up top. The passenger seat features the same power adjustments that you find on the driver's seat. While the GTR does have a more usable back seat than your typical supercar, with a comfortable seating position for myself in the driver's seat, there's essentially no legroom back there. It's not impossible to sit people back there, definitely a lot more practical with the passenger side, but it is very, very limited. The seats are wrapped in leather, you have an extra cup holder back there, and it has pretty good visibility out the windows. The seats can actually be tailored a little bit more when you opt for the semi-anal and leather treatment. Like I said earlier, the center portion of the dash here is completely padded, as is the lower portion. This is a little bit more of a premium material and it's extremely soft. The white double accent stitching as you come down amongst the circular air vents definitely giving it a little bit more of a tailored feel. Lockable glove box down below with a modest amount of space, lined in felt. The Nissan GTR comes from a long line of highly capable and powerful performance machines. With the many revisions to the R35 in recent years, it just keeps getting better and better, offering buyers a premium experience without sacrificing advanced technology and plenty of dynamism. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Nissan GTR. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.